Welcome to Module 3 of the Binomial Distributions, and this is the first lecture discussion in which we will begin evaluating binomial distributions to sneak up on a new set of terms. And of course, this is brought to you by Dr. Dog himself, the infamous statistician. Binomial distributions are founded, of course, upon the possibility of two possible outcomes. Now, let's go back to your childhood and think just a second about the word bi. Do you remember the word bicycle? Bicycle had two tires. A tricycle had three. If we were talking a trinomial distribution, we would be talking about something with three possibilities. But binomial means that we have two possibilities. And we're going to have to, as we work with these binomial distributions, we're going to have to establish a new set of vocabulary terms which we use throughout the process. So hang with me and I'll make this as painless as possible. And here it goes. In a binomial distribution, you have only two possible outcomes. For our purposes, we will characterize them as follows, right or wrong. Now, that's a very interesting way to characterize two possibilities. Who says it's right and who says it's wrong? Well, the person doing the research is going to establish what the right answer is and establish what the wrong answer is. The issue is, is that it is either A, which is the right answer, or B, which is the wrong answer. So remember that you only have two possibilities in a binomial distribution, and the answer is either right or wrong. No other answers are possible. For binomial distributions, we need a new set of terms and letters and definitions. Of course, with a binomial distribution, we'll have a population and a sample. The population, again, is the universe of every element of interest, and the sample is that portion of the population which we selected for our study. Now, here are some of the new terms. Kappa R, the number of right responses. That's how many answers out of all the answers were right. N is the total number of responses. So think about that just a minute. R is the number of right responses. N is the number of total responses. Now you need to learn your P's and Q's. P represents the percentage of right responses in the population. Q represents the percentage of wrong responses. If we have 40% of our answers which are right, then we can have 100 minus 40% or 60% of our answers which are wrong. P and Q have to add up to 100%. Now for the population, kappa R is the number of right responses, kappa N is the total number of responses, P is the percentage of right responses, and Q is the percentage of wrong responses. Now, to illustrate this, here we have a population of aardvarks, and I love aardvarks. Some of these are regular aardvarks, and some of these are albino-Hungarian banded aardvarks. These are the regular aardvarks. These are the al albino-Hungarian banded aardvarks. Now, start with our N, our total number in the population. In this population, we have 16 aardvarks, and you can take your time and count them if you want to. Now, we have two possibilities. We have in this population regular aardvarks, and we have albino-Hungarian banded aardvarks. For our case, we're going to say that the albino-Hungarian banded aardvark is the right answer. So out of 16 possible aardvarks, we have six which are right. They are albino-Hungarian banded aardvarks. So keep in mind the following. R for the population is six, N is 16. Now, R means that we have six right responses. N means we have 16 total possibilities. So we are right six out of 16 times. So P is equal to the number of right responses divided by the number of total responses, or six divided by 16, which is 0 0.3750, or we have a 37.5% possibility of being right if we randomly select an aardvark out of those 16. Now if we're right 37.5% of the time, we would be wrong one minus that, which would be 62.5% of the time. Notice that the percentage of time that we're right plus the percentage of time that we're wrong adds up to 
In other words, if we randomly select an aardvark, we have a 37.5% chance of randomly selecting an albino Hungarian banded aardvark and 62.5% chance of selecting a regular aardvark. Uh, the P is equal to R divided by N for the population. Now, we have a population. R, kappa R is the number right, N is the total number, P is the percentage right, and Q is the percentage wrong. Now, let's take a sample of this population. So we randomly select this sample. Lowercase n is the number in the sample. Lowercase r is the number of right answers in the sample. P hat is the percentage of right answers, which is lower r divided by lower n. Q hat is 1 minus P hat. P hat is the percentage of right answers in the sample. Q hat is the percentage of wrong answers in the sample. Fairly interesting, isn't it? So for the right answers for the sample, we have R, we have N, we have P hat and Q hat. And of course, our albino Hungarian banded aardvarks are right, and our regular old aardvarks are wrong. This is really interesting stuff. Here it is all rehashed for the population, kappa R, kappa N, P and Q. For the sample, lower R, lower N, P hat, and Q hat. So now you've begun to understand some of the terms and definitions that you will use in binomial distributions. Good luck in this. Now you know your P's and Q's. Well, hello, friends. This is the old dog again. You have uh, been to the dog pound when you went into my virtual office. You have been to the dog house when you've been to my office at home. Welcome to the dog cave. This is where I hide out at A&M Commerce. I just want to encourage you as you work on binomial distributions, learn the terms. Know your P's and Q's. P is the percentage correct. Q is the percentage wrong for the population. P hat is the percentage correct for the sample. Q hat is the percentage wrong for the sample. Good luck. I'll see you in a future lecture.